Hi, this is Raul with BDA Systems Company, and in this video, we're gonna cover from start to finish what to look for in a 20-point radio frequency site survey. So let's cover first, what is a site survey? An RF site survey is gonna measure 20 individual points plus critical points on every single floor in the entire building. For that reason, it's also called a 20-point grid test. The idea is that a technician that's usually FCC certified with a PG or GROL, GROL license, a general radio operator license, is going to walk around with a spectrum analyzer and check the frequencies for that authority having jurisdiction. We're gonna be checking for police and fire frequencies for a public safety survey or cellular frequencies, and that includes all the carriers in a cellular system survey. So let's talk about what is an RF site survey. A site survey is a measurement of all the radio frequencies pertaining to that authority having jurisdiction. That's for the police and fire. You can also do a site survey for cellular frequencies. That's T-Mobile, Sprint, AT&T, and Verizon. The idea is we're gonna walk around with a spectrum analyzer and measure 20 individual points as, as well as critical areas on every floor of the entire floor plan. A 20 point grid is overlaid on every floor in order to make sure that we get accurate measurements throughout the entire floor plan to get an average of the overall signal strength in that building, in that floor. So who can do an RF size survey? If you're doing a survey for the authority having jurisdictions, police and fire frequencies, you're gonna need an FCC certified technician. That license is the GROL or the PG, which as is classified by the FCC. The GROL or the General Radio Operator License allows a technician to certify a system for passing or fail scores. If you're doing a site survey for the cellular frequencies, you do not require the PG license. That is a third party commercial license. What's a passing or failing score? Well, according to the NFPA and the IFC, anything better than a negative 95 number is considered passing. The closer you get to zero, the better, because these are negative numbers, remember that. Anything worse than a negative 95 number is considered a fail. Now, your entire floor plan can pass with 95% of that floor plan having a better than negative 95 number, which means you're allowed for 5% of that floor plan to fail and still have a passing score. When it comes to critical areas, 99% of all critical areas in the building have to pass. That means you're only allowed 1% of all your critical areas to fail in order to receive a failing score. Anytime you fail a floor plan or critical area, you're gonna be required to then install a BDA system. So now let's talk about the tools of the trade. In order to do an RF signal survey, you need something called a spectrum analyzer. This device will be programmed to search for all the radio frequencies that are pertaining to that AHJ or for that carrier, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint. Now, in order to do a proper RF survey for an AHJ when it comes to police and fire frequencies, your device has to be calibrated and approved by that AHJ. The one I have in my hand is a PCTEL Seagull, and for example, this one is approved by most AHJs and is calibrated often. In order to do a cellular survey, you can use a handheld aftermarket one by some of the uh, OEMs that also make these. This coupled with the FCC license by the technician is what holds the most water uh, with the AHJs. To do a proper site survey, this sits on my hip. It measures the frequencies that are programmed in by my tablet. Okay, so now let's say it's day of of your RF signal survey in your property. What do you need? Well. The most important thing is you want to give that technician access to every single floor and every single room that's needed. So we need to walk into 20 different cells throughout the building. And sometimes that could be behind, be behind a, a security door or into some sensitive area. Please plan ahead to make sure that somebody will be there to walk the technician around. The, the signal survey time to completion depends completely on how much access that technician has. It's only about one to two days max. Sometimes we don't even have to come back the second day. Typically we do everything in one shot where we can walk around, do our RF signal survey and be done. The reports usually take 24 to 48 hours and that just depends on technician. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to us. And if you would like to schedule an RF signal survey, one of our technicians will be happy to help. Thanks.